tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, everyone. And welcome to another After Buzz for the Americans. Uh, as always, you can feel more than free to follow us on iTunes, uh, tweet to us on Twitter. And with that said, I'll go ahead and introduce my co-host. Hi, I'm Julian Dujeric. You can uh, follow me at Julian Dujeric on Instagram and Twitter. Hello, this is Comrade Joshua Richmond <laughs> doing show for Afterbus TV, the Americans. And you can follow me on Twitter at Radio TFB. Do you think I could keep up this accent for the entire show? I, I hope so. I, <laughs> yes, we shall see. I should, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm calling it now. I just wanted to do the intro. Just no worries. That's awesome. Uh, and I'm Adrian Snow. You can follow me on Twitter at Miss Adrian Snow. So why don't we just go ahead and go right in? Let's talk about this. Season like three, a, episode two, baggage. baggage. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Let's give a overall. What did you guys think overall? It's you know as usual with a show like The Americans. Often you you have a, you have a premiere that's real exciting. Maybe you've got like some big action set pieces and introduces the themes for the season. And then season two, you get a lot of pieces moving into place and kind of setting up a lot of the ongoing plots. You know, we have the woman from the U.S. Canada department kind mm -hmm. of coming in and we're introduced to a few new characters, mm -hmm. which is all important stuff for the season's arc, but doesn't always necessarily make the most exciting single episode of TV. Okay, so that's what you felt about episode two. Um, at least so far. I mean, I'm digging a lot of where it's going. Yeah. I didn't necessarily feel like there was a ton to hold on to, at least for what we're seeing right now. Fair enough. Yeah, I think this episode was definitely lining up all the ducks to get ready for what we saw in the promo, which we'll talk about hopefully later on, uh, to be a really good third episode. Um, yeah, I, I, I echo all of those sentiments. I think it's it's not necessarily the type of episode that mm. is, uh, I won't say super exciting, but it's... It's one that leaves you excited for what's to come, for sure. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I felt, you know, it it was setting up some more stuff from the previous episode. I did feel like they kind of narrowed in a little bit more mm -hmm. with what was going mm -hmm. on. I felt like finally I got to know what the name of U.S. Canada Institute's lady was. Right. You know, for a while. <laughs> or even, <laughs> st even stand it really seemed Yeah, to I was like, well, what's her name? You know. Lady in a box, I call yeah, it. Yeah, lady in the box. <laughs> uh, U.S. Canada Institute defector, Zaneda. Zaneda, right. We another, finally... another character to nail down in this constantly expanding American yes. universe. Mm. Which we is, found... to be fair, it's part of what I love about the show. And I was talking about this with you before mm -hmm. we watched the episode is, I do love that even as the show, which really started with her central family, has grown so much, and now we're seeing so much of the world inside the FBI and the Residentura, and now we're even in Moscow, and we've got all these characters in Moscow. And it's great seeing all, how all these plots are kind of moving in parallel and the way that they're all going to kind of dovetail and intersect. It's, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, it's a wonderful setup. Um, we also got to learn the name of the new lady in the Russian faction, uh, Tatiana. Right. She was kind of introduced last week, and she's going to play a bigger factor, which was nice to see as well. The new Nina. The new Nina. Well, I think she's actually, she's not an assistant. She's something, she's more like along the lines of the director is what I'm getting the impression of. Right. So she's not quite the new Nina. But it's not like, but, Nina, but Nina wasn't quite an assistant either. She's, you know, double agent yeah, playing both sides sort she of thing. Was, yeah. This woman yeah. seems to have a little bit more power, and I think they're going to, it looks like they're kind of setting up something between her and Oleg, which... That, another reason I'm saying the new Nina. You know, uh, Possibly. I mean, Oleg, I think, is kind of an incorrigible uh, lady hound, it seems like. <laughs> Possibly. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see about that. But we'll I guess to start I'll save things, that for predictions. Yeah, we'll save that for predictions. <laughs> and I do want to touch a little bit more on Nina's storyline as well. But I felt like maybe we should start off with Yusuf because he is playing a really big part in just how he's been interacting with Elizabeth and Philip. What are your guys' thoughts on that storyline? It's, you know... Obviously, killing off Annalise last episode, that was, that was kind of a big bang, big way to start. And instantly, yeah, he's pulled back it, back into this universe. I'm still... That's I, that's kind of what I mean when I say it's one of the, it's one of the plots where I'm thinking I'm very curious to see where it's going. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what to make of it so far. 
Okay. I think it's it's always interesting for me to see a character that is thrust into a situation that forces them to uh, come to terms with a compromising of their moral compass a little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, not a lot of it. I mean, he killed her. Um, but I, I, it's it's interesting to see kind of how the paradigm shifts for him uh, in in that regard. I just I just find that so interesting. It, it's yeah. interesting because yeah. I when he killed her, I was like. God, that's just such a cold-blooded mm. act, and the fact that he didn't right, and he, he didn't really, he wasn't it. hesitating. He was yeah. doing it very calmly and controlled, and yeah. just yeah, he was very calm. Almost and controlled like it about was it. an inconvenience for him. I feel like like oh, she was so good. Like yeah, oh, I don't have to kill her now. She was the best lay. Right, she it's, spoke that's... French. Yeah, she spoke French. I know like... his his list. How can, you, how can I kill somebody who speaks French? <laughs> yeah, his list so of why he liked her was kind of, in my opinion, <laughs> pathetic. Yeah. Like she studied, she majored in art history, and she spoke French. Right, I could talk to her. <laughs> what, dude? Seriously? Like that's all that you got out of that? I mean, great. I'm, yeah. I'm sure you, that's better than your previous ways is that she could actually speak French yeah. to you. Right. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> but yeah, if I could talk to her is the best you could do. I mean, good. Go go get a therapist. You could talk to her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it didn't seem... I didn't have much sympathy for Yusuf in this episode. I haven't had much sympathy for him overall. I haven't really either. No. And I didn't really care when they were like, yeah, you have to break this girl's leg. I mean, oh, I'm so sorry for you. You killed her. Mm. Like, deal with it. Yeah, it's a little bit, you know, like, sorry, you uh, you got to clean up your own mess. You got to yeah. help it do the dirty work in some way. They, which, they were really they were really digging and breaking the bones on that woman. And... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kudos to Elizabeth for taking a picture of Yusuf. Doing yeah. That. I would have thought. Some good blackmail, would... some good yeah. spying. Right they're very there. smart. They're very trade. Yeah. yeah. I would never have thought to do that, but that's uh, it's super smart. Because I, I didn't even know what she, what she was doing until, like, probably, like, 10 seconds in. And then I made the random comment, like, oh. Just yeah. in case. <laughs> Smart yeah, woman. Of course. <laughs> yeah, you know, I will say Elizabeth is is just such a savvy, savvy Russian spy mm. for the most part. But her savviness sometimes I feel like gets in the way of of uh, her ability to think before she acts. Well, that is, I mean, that is, I think, part of why she's a great character. She's obviously, she's very good at her job and very trained, yeah. but she's not always very self-aware. No. And there are times when she's kind of getting in over her head and doesn't seem to realize it yeah. because she's so, so blinded by just tunnel vision, dedication to the cause and dedication to what she's doing. Yeah, everything yeah. sort of falls to the periphery for her, which uh, I kept making the joke, like the, the, uh, the I guess we can't say that word, but uh, the award for the person with the biggest testicular fortitude, I guess is a good you way to put balls. it. I think we can say can balls. Can you say balls? I think balls are okay. Right. For chutzpah, I really, yeah. chutzpah, 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 goes, <laughs> goes to her, goes to Elizabeth, but you mentioned, you know, that's that could be, it could be that or it could just be that she's really dumb. It's incredibly, incredibly reckless. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, and she's, the, the amount of times these characters seem okay with like showing their faces around to, to various CIA agents or Afghanistan uh, counter intelligence or whatever like they they live next door to a, a counterintelligence officer who's like best friends with them at some point that's going to get them in trouble it hasn't so far in the series but it's going to well yeah it's, yeah. it's you know it's the gun on the wall yeah. eventually that will that gun will be fired exactly but with that said i i also feel that elizabeth is just incredibly reckless i mean she has been caught almost twice if we have anything to assume from previews she may almost get caught for the third time and that kind of Yusuf really brought up a really great point of just the the power dynamic in Philip and Elizabeth's relationship. She is so much about serving her country. She's so much about doing everything in the name of her country, and how you know that has begun to affect. It's always affected the relationship, and now it's beginning to affect the relationship with their children because yes. Paige is is about to be recruited, and Philip can see the recklessness of Elizabeth, and that you know something could eventually not go her way. She could eventually be in a suitcase, and he doesn't want that for her, and he certainly doesn't want that for his daughter. Well, I think, I actually, I think my favorite moment of the episode was where they, where Philip and Elizabeth were having that conversation about whether they should start kind of, uh, I, you know, getting brain, uh, getting Paige ready to be a KGB officer maybe at some point down the line. Because, you know, Elizabeth is deluded in her way, thinking that it's just going to work out if Paige gets into their line of work, that she'll be somehow safe and, you know, get a, get a cushy CIA job. Like, that's not going to go bad at some point. Mm. But Philip is also deluded if he really thinks 
uh, if he really wants a guarantee that life's always going to be easy, which is the quote, the quote I wrote, there's, mm -hmm. you can't guarantee that for your children. That's mm -hmm. impossible. Even, even if you don't want, even if Paige isn't going to be a KGB agent, if, if, if that is Philip's motivation is to give Paige a perfect, easy life, that's not going to work out either. Well, he's, the writing's already on the wall. I mean, they're both KGB spies. It's yeah. inevitable that their family lives, everyone in their family, whether nuclear or extended, is going to be affected to some in, to some degree. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Pa and Paige is already completely affected by it. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know exactly what her parents are lying about, but she knows her parents lie about everything all the time because she's pretty smart. Well, yeah, that, that's another thing. As you know, as your children get older, they are going to start to notice that right. your dad's always out late. So right. Dad yeah. doesn't come home for a night. And so that's something that they need to, to deal with. And I think also with uh, the KGB, they're also kind of factoring that in, that these covers are hard to keep up once their children start to come to a certain age where they can recognize that something is going on. So better to keep everything within the family, better to, uh, you know, create another set of spies than to risk their covers being blown by the fact that they have basically children that could eventually out them. So they're yeah. smart on that factor. However, uh, I don't think what Phil, what Philip wants is at all wrong. I think it's a natural fatherly instinct to want the best for your children and to want to protect them. And I also think, yeah, most parents don't want their children to become spies that like have right. sex with a bunch of random people and murder no. people and mm -hmm. they get their faces slammed into to car hoods. That's fair. Of I, <laughs> so, no, I, I agree. I, I, I mean, I completely understand why, I, you know, and I think that's really, I think that's Philip's main motivation at this point isn't necessarily doing it for the motherland, but basically doing it to do, give his children a better life. You know, the same motivation of a lot of parents. Yeah. I just think he's also being unrealistic about the ways his lifestyle is affecting his children. And and thinking that oh if we can if we can just do everything 100 percent right Paige will never find out never be affected by any of this I think if he really thinks that he is crazy mm. and maybe there is an maybe there is an argument to be made for telling your children some hard truths about yourself and being actually open and honest with them you know <laughs> sorry there was Got a bug. that was a yeah that's it was some, that's me some, a little uh, too but some, okay. spi some spiral skills eventually. right there well you know. <laughs> I've, I've seen the show a couple times. Yes. <laughs> and you pick up a, a few things. But to your point, um, it, it, is, it is very naive of, of him to, to think that there is, is in no way going to be at least some level of curiosity on part of their children mm. uh, as to what's going on. You know, there, we saw that in this episode. Uh, why is dad always out? And she even said one of the, I, I, can't, I didn't write down the quote, but I think she said, Paige said some, something to the effect, and correct me if I'm wrong, oh, uh, you guys look out for each other more, more than, than you us. Do us. Yeah. yeah. And I thought Which, that was super powerful. Yeah. That's such a powerful statement. And then obviously tried to backtrack a little I, I mean, bit. It's, yeah, say, it's a pretty cold yeah. thing. To, to, this is something actually Paige does a lot. Is she'll say something really cold like that, and then she'll be, oh, but that's fine. You know, whatever. Yeah. It's fine that you guys look out for each other well, more than guys, us. Well, you guys, she's <laughs> Russian. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, she's got yeah. it in her blood. She's yeah. got it in her blood. <laughs> Honesty. Uh, no, I, I feel like they've always kind of referenced the fact that Paige is picking up on things. The fact that she, at one point, refused to hang up the phone when they, they were talking about business and they could tell that she was listening in, they told her hang up. So she's always, you know, kind of on the game of like something is up, yeah. which would make her a wonderful spy. Mm -hmm. But I don't <laughs> think that's a good and idea. She, for all we know, she might be sympathetic to the KGB cause. She is starting to a good little anti-capitalist this episode, yeah. making fun of having to go to Pepsi University one day. And... Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say as someone who is currently living in 2015, uh -huh. that recruiting your daughter to the KJB, K, KJB, KGB in the 1980s is not a good idea. Yeah, Some may argue that recruiting your daughter in 2015 is not a good idea. <laughs> yes, I would agree with that as well. <laughs> yeah, I would continue to agree with that, sure. But speaking of uh, just recruitment, I guess we can switch over into Stan. For some reason, that linked in my head, FBI recruitment. <laughs> uh, Stan has, Stan is such a sad little man this episode. I know, Stan has pathetic. been a sad character for some time. Such a it's long just getting sadder time. and sadder, yeah. What were your thoughts on, on his arc and dealing with uh, almost getting shot? Yeah, well, it's last episode we had a, he went to that seminar that was all about honesty, right? Asked. 
Est. What est. What, I still don't know what Est is. Okay, I, still yeah. no I can idea. explain Est. Can you? Please explain that to me. Because I was invited to <laughs> the new version of Est, the Landmark, landmark Forum. Forum. Yes. Oh, that's, we talked about that's, this. That's what the Landmark Forum is? I yes. Yeah. I've been wondering what the hell the Landmark Forum is. Basically, it, it's, a, it's a, a program, it's a weekend program that uh, is all about you finding <laughs> your best self and acknowledging... <laughs> your best self. That, I'm, already, I'm already laughing. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean, I, like... <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble for saying your best self, but yeah, it's, it's something wrong. that is making you you have to hold yourself accountable for how people affect your life. So right. that's what it's about. So that's why it kind of prompts. Est is also it's the same. It's basically the same company. Landmark is just like the modernized version of it. Right. And it kind of forces you to to demand the best in yourself, to be accountable for your actions, to be accountable for how you let people affect you, which is why Sandra becomes totally. like, and also giving all, And also, meanwhile, life. giving all your money to the land. I was just going to say that. <laughs> uh, all so while giving $600 well. uh, a week. Yeah. And so, that and as well. If yeah. anybody listening is a member of the Landmark Forum, we apologize. You should continue We're to go to not. YouTube and like our videos and find us on iTunes and rate us. Yes. We're not, we won't make... We'll, we won't continue to make There money. are benefits <laughs> to it. There are benefits to it, but it is your money as well. So, uh, <laughs> but, but I was yeah. saying that, yeah, that... That uh, you know, all Sandra wants is honesty, and suddenly in this episode, maybe prompted by the fact he very easily could have died, Stan is really opening up to her. For I almost feel like the first time all series, yeah. and but it's, it's too late, and Sandra isn't really having it, which is yeah. which, which was heartbreaking. I I found that I found that she was really like thinking to probably. I mean, I don't know what she was thinking, but it seemed as if her disposition was one of someone who does not believe him and does not, I wouldn't say doesn't care, but just is kind of over, Yeah, it's kind of over everything that has happened in their in yeah. their marriage and it is it is too late for her. Um, this isn't someone who has put his life in danger. Um, this isn't the first time that he's put his life in danger. I'm sure it's certainly not the first time that he's almost gotten shot or has had a gun no. pulled out, out on him. Yeah. Um, so if I were in that situation, if I were in her situation, I'd probably be thinking like now, like what's the difference between now of you almost getting shot and the mil like thousands of times in the 20 year career that you've had at the FBI that you've almost died. Like I don't understand why that's happening now, why you're so forthcoming now. So I definitely, I, I as, as, as uh, sad as I feel for the situation, I definitely yeah. understand her in that regard. I, to I totally understand her point yeah. of view. I think it's it's just, uh, it's sad that, that he's only able to open up now that it is officially too yeah. late to do anything about it. Well, that's when people <laughs> always want to open up. It's yeah. like right when it's finally like, okay, yeah. this is it. I'm gone. That's mm. when people go, oh, okay, well, wait, wait, wait. Right. You think it's now maybe I can because give you what I want. <laughs> he <laughs> what you may want. not have anything to lose at this point, or he feels as if he has I, nothing well, to lose? Well, I feel like it's, it's more of, he has lost everything, right? And so yeah. now he's racing to get it back okay. in some way. Uh, it's not really that he has nothing to lose. I mean, I think turning his back on Oleg is, is him already realizing that he's lost everything. So that's okay. him saying, "I have nothing to lose." Okay. But I think him going to Sandra. I think it was something that happened that was a scary moment for him. Not to say that he hasn't had those moments in the past and they haven't dealt with it together before, but the difference was is that when it happened this time, there was no one to go home to. Mm. Right. And so it, after he was almost shot in the back, he just wanted to see his wife. He just wanted to see his, his child, and they weren't there. And when they, he was able to see them, it was kind of like... You're not a part of our life yeah. in that way. No, anymore. he's. I, I mean, he's. I really think he is 100 percent responsible for the situation he finds himself yeah. in because he has been so cold and closed off, and it's. Uh, it's. It's. It is. It's just a sad situation all around. But it's. I mean, it is the nature of his job. You're not supposed yeah. to tell. You're not supposed to. Yeah, you're but, not supposed but, to. But you remember there was. I think there was a moment in the last season when Sandra was saying, you know, I know like the wives of other counterintelligence officers, and they say their husbands. They obviously can't talk about the missions, but they can still talk about any funny little detail, of something that happened at work, or yeah. make something oh, that would, right. you know, help help us connect. I did and forget he does, about he that. Never, he never offers that up. I remember that episode. I remember, and that that was that was also something that was striking to me yeah. uh, when I saw it, because I do wonder what it is that. Uh, people who work in clandestine jobs, uh, how is it that they connect with their spouses if they can't really yeah. talk about something that really makes up such a large portion of their day? Frankly, that's what engages me most about this show, is a lot of the spy plots I can kind of take or leave, but seeing just the little details of how either people who are spies for the enemy living in a foreign mm -hmm. land or even just like spies for mm -hmm. our country like navigate their lives, navigate all the lies and secrets they have to keep together is... Uh, continues to be kind of a fascinating engine for this show. Yeah. That, they always 
I think the the dynamic of Stan and Sandra versus Philip and Elizabeth is is a really good thing to see. You see yeah. how, though Philip and Elizabeth don't always get along, and certainly first season they were kind of at each other's throats. The fact that they are both in this together, they're both doing the same job, that they're both fighting for their country as spies, allows them to confide in each other and have that closeness and yeah, that reliance. Yeah, they, ha they, have, they have a healthy functional yes. marriage, which is and, kind of amazing to see. Yeah, and so you see that from, I, I really love what the show does in terms of showing how these people who are considered enemies are, are able to kind of uh, show this humanity, and whereas <laughs> the actual Americans <laughs> Can't uh, and are very yeah are struggling so much. Are struggling so much to just get by on the day to day and God that phone call yeah. Stan had to make oh, saying hey this this is Stan Beeman calling for Matthew Beeman yeah he, I mean I almost I almost feel like maybe even before he spent years with the the white power movement or whatever I have a feeling he was just a person who was always awkward making connections with anybody yeah I mean that would make sense in yeah. becoming a spy and all it yeah. requires, <laughs> it requires a little just, yeah. reclusiveness to yes. some degree yeah it just to. seems like a very deep part of his character yeah, yeah yes. and that that it's definitely that definitely man. um tugged at my heartstrings a little bit i was I was like wow this this guy is really reaching out in a way that he hasn't done or at least in a way that we haven't seen him in the last i guess ever yeah um it it yeah it got me got me a little got me a little sad in the yeah. in the tummies in the hearties. <laughs> I felt a little sad for Stan, but then again. Uh, Oleg did have every right to pull a gun on Stan because he did basically, I mean, he, he should not have betrayed his country. I agree with right. that 100%. <laughs> but he also did kind of just throw Nina to the wind and be like, hey, yeah. enjoy prison in Russia. Have fun. Uh, Nina threw herself to the wind. I she mean, did. Well, <laughs> poor thing. We she could, just was kind of nice. Though she's, she is looking good in Soviet Gulag. Yeah, so, so we, <laughs> shall we touch on Nina? I mean, Nina <laughs> is in prison in Russia in a very nice, like, velour jumpsuit. She has yeah. a coiffed hairstyle. Yeah, her hair's like, like, a very wet hairstyle. look. <laughs> you know, I like her jumpsuit. Yeah. Grant, yeah. they gave her a bucket to piss in. They gave her a bucket. You know, and toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper. Yeah. Which is Seems like high end it. for a Russian prison. Very nice. I mean, I've lunch. never been in a Russian jail, and hopefully, knock on wood, um, <laughs> I never will. But that seems that seems pretty legit to me. Yeah. No. Oh no, she's got she's got it made. <laughs> she does. She's got it. I why does she, got why, it made. Does, why would she even want to go back to America? Right. I'm exactly. <laughs> that it sounds view? like it sounds like the motherland for her was like a desperate, awful place, and now she's like gone up a couple pegs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> The view from her window and <laughs> the lunch that she had. I saw some greens on the She that has one great company. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. woman is she knows English and French. She's Belgian. She's she is Belgian. Belgian. That's okay. right. Yeah. Was she speaking French now? Uh she spoke a little she spoke she said French and Russian to say to to say like, hey. Okay. Another Do you speak that? Okay. Another speak intriguing English. character who says she is innocent, but Nina replies, This is not a jail for innocent people. Yeah. We don't know what she may have done to end up in this position. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if that if that in any way ties to to what's going what's on, going on yeah. or if it's just like a one-off thing, which is which I always love. I love to kind of add detail and a, a dynamic that doesn't necessarily go that far, but it's just it adds uh, a sense of realism to it. Of course, Nina has already planted the seeds for her escape route um, with that relationship, her relationship with Oleg. Oleg's got pulled with his dad, and yeah, his Igor. dad's gonna get her out. Finally, got to see the the father come in. What do I, we think of that? Does, do we want to, <laughs> I, I thought that was interesting. I, yeah. You know, I, it seemed, I, I got a little uncomfortable when I saw Igor walk in, um, or when he was introduced, because in the past, how Nina is usually treated by older men that she's introduced to, mm. <laughs> it, it, it usually turns a, in a sexual way, mm. and I'm kind of like, oh God, what is he going to ask her? So I got a little uncomfortable with that. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that storyline. I, I really thought when they, if they reintroduced Nina, it was just going to be to kill her. <laughs> uh, I kind of felt that, you know, her storyline past that had kind of come to an end. And it so did now seem I'm, like it had. I'm yeah. kind of curious to see what they're going to do with Nina. I don't know, without Stan where she falls. I also, I also got to say that I like having a character like Nina around who's kind of a wild card. Yeah. Surprisingly, for a spy show like this, we pretty much know the allegiances of most of the main characters. You know, we know what what basically what Philip Philip and Elizabeth's motivation is and what Stan's motivation is. Nina's one of the few characters who's 
a total wild card who we really don't know what her, who's, who she's playing at any given time. She's the Joker of the she's Americans. She's playing for herself. She's which pl- is exactly. Yeah. She's she playing for herself. For herself. Uh, but yeah, so that that was interesting, and it was nice for them to kind of to bring her back. I know there's some curiosity if she was actually going <laughs> to come back. So now we know she's there. We know that she is in Russia, and she's alive. So that's a big deal. And <laughs> the thing is that I thought was interesting is that. I, I guess Oleg has already assumed that she is, been a, or she is on her way to the execution. Yeah, that she's just dead. That she's dead, and Igor, and you know, has kind of stepped in, without telling his son. So it's I'm curious to see like if Igor is going to play Nina against Oleg to get something that he wants from Oleg later down the line. Igor did say something about being disappointed in his son, or yeah. how parents are easily disappointed in their children. So I I would definitely. Ooh, do you think that was a read on Nina? Like, oh, he could have done so much better. No, no, no. <laughs> he said, because right when he I walked in, he said, I, I see I, why. I'm a Nita fan. Yeah. <laughs> Igor no, said when he walked in, I can see why my son fell for you. So I yeah. don't think that was a read at all. I think it was just him being Okay. But when Nina, father. But when Nina says, I wasn't pretending with Oleg, I... Do not buy it. For you don't a buy it. I, yeah, I was just going to ask, what do you guys think of that? Do you? Buy, she is. I... You said. You just said that she's <laughs> playing for herself, but she seems pretty sincere. But given her history, yeah. I don't. I don't necessarily buy it either. I don't. I, know if, I don't know if she was really in love with Stan or with Oleg, or frankly with. I any don't of think them. she was. I thought uh, for a minute she was in love with Stan until he killed Ivan. Yeah. Right. right. And then that and then it turned her. But I felt that what she had with Oleg was was genuine. But with that said. If we've learned nothing about Nina, is that Nina is about surviving. So nobody can trump the fact that she wants to survive. Right. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if she cuts both those men down so that she can live. Mm. Fair enough. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Or all three yeah. of them. Your theory might be right <laughs> on the old man, the May-December thing that hap- seems to happen with her. Oh, yeah. yeah Oleg's, Oleg's going to love that if her and Igor start to it. Well, well I, keep it in the know. family. You know, that's what I say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 Anywho. <laughs> Don't tweet me, okay? <laughs> oh, no. Keep it in the family. Uh, so, oh, and uh, we get to see Frank Langella again, which is really nice. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow, I brought back us Gabriel. Um, who like, I, I but, love. But, just a, an amazing character actor, and I love seeing him in this role. Yeah. Um, it's great to see uh, our central couple with a handler that they actually trust mm. and aren't always mm-hmm. just trying to like figure out their motives. It seems like they have a long enough history with Gabriel that he really can just step in and be... Like somebody they can just talk to and confide in and work with. He's more of a, a fatherly figure, which is nice to yeah. see. You know, them have that dynamic and that. It, I think what's really been nice this season is seeing more of the history with Elizabeth. We touched a little bit on Philip's history, either of say season two or season one, when they brought back his old love, right. who was now who was a spy, and they had like kind of an affair. Um, so it was nice to see her talk a little bit more about her family, talk about her mother, and and how her relationship with her mother plays in the dynamic of her relationship with Paige. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so f- Frank serving as Gabriel in that sense to bring that to light, it's been really nice as well. Yeah, she, uh, her mother seems very, very Soviet. Um, you know, you know, yeah. <laughs> the fact, the fact that. Uh, she Elizabeth essentially comes to her at sixteen and saying, This is this is what I'm going to do and her mother doesn't even hesitate and just says, You do what you have to do to serve the country. Very you know, very cold, very straightforward, very just, you know, about getting it done, no must, no fuss. Yeah. And uh and Elizabeth I think is trying to bring the same dynamic to her relationship with Paige. And Paige does kind of take after her mother a little bit. There is a little bit of Elizabeth in Paige. Oh, definitely. I think there's I think for Elizabeth, her big concern is that she even said it, you know, that Paige is a teenager in this country. She right. really despises America. She hates America. <laughs> which is that, funny because she has, seems to have a very great life in America. <laughs> but uh, I mean, she's got the house, ha- she's got the nice house yeah. and the yeah. car and whatever. No, I would I would call her life great when she's getting well, having to get beat I was up just all the say, time. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> having to have sex with random men or like yeah. getting your head slammed into a. a car hood isn't that fun but or having or getting whatever happened with her tooth that she can't even go to a dentist for fear of getting caught yes that's that's it's, not fun. yeah that's crazy to me that she still it, that she still feels as though she can reconcile her her life in america with her you know desire to serve her country i thought that's i mean that i that's almost like robotic in nature well how she's she a soldier and, and yeah. that's 
the one great thing that I, I, mean, I love with Elizabeth is that she is the soldier. Mm -hmm. So if Philip is more of like, I'm doing this because I feel like for him, it's almost a way just to get out of Russia. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he still cares about Russia, but it was, it eventually became this thing where I was like, this is nice. I like having a car. I like, it, you know, yeah, he, having season changes. He adapted, like he adapted to America. Yeah, yeah he adapted for sure. to it. I think, it. I think he ultimately wants Paige to have a normal American life. Yes. I don't know if he, I don't know if he, I don't know if he loves America so much that he wants that for himself. I'm sure he thinks he, he's way too far gone at this point, but I think he's trying to set that up for the rest of for the, his family. I what, think you go ahead. Go, I'm sorry. What I think was interesting also was the conversation between Philip and Elizabeth about Elizabeth going to see her mother mm -hmm. and how for some reason that wasn't an option personally for Elizabeth. She said, "I you know we can't go back." So I'm, I'm interested because in knowing why. For her to go back, for them to go back, uh, for anything personal, would be a blow and cover. Oh, so they've, okay. they've yeah. agreed. I mean, how would, how would they make it back into America again after that? Oh, wow. Okay, I, They, they That's do right. have the resources. <laughs> Philip is right, but that goes against their mission. Mm. And she is a soldier. Man, that is her is mission. A, just, ugh, everything, everything falls to the periphery with this woman. She's just like laser focus, which is commendable, but like, how would you do it, that as a human being, as a mother, as a yeah, wife? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough mom to have. What are you yeah. talking about? That's just called being a woman, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> do it all. Uh -huh. uh, no, it, it is kind of, Lean it works Elizabeth. for her and it works against her as well. You know, that laser focus makes her great at her job, but it also sometimes makes her a crappy parent, sometimes makes her a crappy wife, sometimes it makes her a crappy spy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it works for her and against her, because sometimes she doesn't know when to step back. Do you think so. she f feels anything, I wonder? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, 100 she I don't feels know. a ton, it's, a ton. It's, it's so, it's just, I'm so fascinated by characters, or even people really, that are able to compartmentalize their emotions in that way. Um, or is she compartmentalizing? Is she just it, Elizabeth, the character, that good of an actress? I, I don't know. No, I a hundred percent think she has feelings, and I think mm -hmm. you see it a lot, even yeah. if she tries to keep it. The one I wonder about actually is Philip, who you you see it when he again you see it when he's breaking Annalise's bones, and every time he has to kill an innocent person, and kind of maybe he seems like he feels a second of remorse, and then just keeps moving like a shark. Yeah. He talked he talked a lot last season about how the toll of killing all of these innocent people is taking on him. Yeah. And I think he's starting to become almost numb to it. Oh, yeah. That's when it, that's when it becomes <laughs> dangerous, when you feel nothing. Well, I think they're both kind of numb to it. I mean, how long have they been doing this? They've been doing yeah. it for at least 15 years mm -hmm. if Paige is, is going on 15 years old. So I can imagine uh, killing, <laughs> as with anything can become easy if you do it enough. Sorry, that sounded really psychopathic. I just want no, everyone no, to know that no, I'm that's not. All, that's almost so the I, think point. That's, I think that's the point, yeah. 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 I don't he's, think that's, he's that's kind weird. Of, he's kind of becoming a monster, or is a monster. Yeah. And one of the beautiful things about this show is that it does manage to play with our sympathies like that. Yeah. For a character who, if we were seeing the whole show through Stan's eyes, this character is, is no doubt just like a horrible, horrible monster who's trying to bring down America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a, a real beauty to the mirroring that goes on. I think we kind of touched on it a little bit where um, the defector, Zaneda, mm. was talking about how uh, she feels that the, the Soviet Union, you might, you kind of responded a little bit more to it, the Soviet Union is like making these assumptions that they have a certain amount of control or they have the right to what was what do you remember exactly this what she said at the a right for I, i'm not sure where you're going with uh the... just how they they feel like they have the right to kind of a, a attack this country and that they have a right to control oh, their yeah the, yes yeah i think oh i was just making a reference <laughs> i don't want to make any political <laughs> references uh with anything that's <laughs> happening in 2015 but uh, i was just making a reference to how countries and i leave the country yes. that I was thinking about, nameless, uh, tend to think that they are, you know, the uh, fixers of the world, the destroyers of the world, yeah. the be all end all. Like what the country could of... you possibly be talking well, about? Well, no, there's several. But... Yeah, there are several. <laughs> yeah, there are several. <laughs> but you know, I did think that was interesting yeah. that, that she she's at this kind of moral fork in the road, um, or I guess not really a moral fork. Like she's she's in America, so yeah, she's, so you she's know, decided. She's decided. It's it's interesting to me that she's decided to to you know kind of 
take on that perspective or she's coming from that perspective when she was in the motherland where where it's so hard when you're so influenced when there is so much thing so many things propagated yeah. uh it, it, that that influence you in a way that you may not necessarily even realize so i thought that was really interesting that she was was able to have the wherewithal to kind of you know think outside of the box a little bit and i'm not, and i'm not saying that america is a better country or russia is a better country or any country is better or worse i'm i'm just i think it's interesting um that she was able to kind of do that for herself um and and gain that perspective no well i mean yeah. i mean capitalism is seductive too mm -hmm. you know you see it in the set you just you see it in the way she looks at a milky way bar you know yeah it's just yeah. like the 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 treats of the pleasures of being in america it's it's very easy even from an outside perspective to see how that seems maybe a little bit more appealing than being in a a poor communist icebound country you know which is why I don't understand. I mean, I guess you're right. She's a soldier. I'm going harking back to Elizabeth a yeah. little bit. Uh, I, I, I just I don't understand how someone can be like that and like so robotic in the way or I guess robotics, not even the way the, the right word, just so, so apathetic, I guess, about. Well, I think there's uh, <laughs> a certain amount of um, idealism that comes with that. I think, you know, with. Which goes Soldiers. to show that I would make a terrible spy. By well, the way. no, I, with, with, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. Yeah, she's, committed, always, she's committed to a cause. I, you I, can I, always be a freelance spy, but okay. I think I uh, just sorry, just to touch on this. Yeah, with soldiers, how that you are trained to be a soldier is to to look at your enemy as an animal, as less than, oh, true. and to also see your country as the best country in the world. There's nothing better than your country. And all countries across the board do this to soldiers. That That's how you get them to, to do what they do, to have something in the service of. I mean, a lot of people do things in the name of other things. So... Yeah, from the perspective of somebody like Elizabeth, yeah. America is uh, you know, it's a country mm. of hedonism. It's a country exactly. full of pigs who only care about material comforts and don't care about anything bigger than themselves. And I think that's, a, that's just a really great point about, uh, about the show is that they show how with any country, with any other culture, that they can in, have the same viewpoint that we sometimes give to other countries, mm. that they can look at them and say, well, they can look at us and say, well, <laughs> We are terrorists, and yeah. we are bad, and we need to be um, corrected or annihilated. And so it's just an interesting viewpoint. It I've is. I always like the Americans for that. It's great having all the viewpoints, although, you know, it does mean when we get in situations where uh, Stan looks like he's about to be killed, I'm like, they're, they're not going to kill Stan. I wanted them so badly <laughs> to kill oh, did him. You? Kill you, them. You, did you, were you? you were talking about how you feel like we're overdue for a death on the Americans. It, you know, and I thought for a second, maybe you're going to get your wish in a very surprising fashion. For a show <laughs> that's been on for three seasons... To have pretty much all of the people who were there season one still be there is crazy. Was Nina in season one? Yes. Yeah, she okay. was there she for was like the second episode. Okay. The only person that was a regular that was murdered was Stan's partner, and that was first season. So I'm amazed that they've all made it this far. Oh, right. Yeah. But with I'm, that said, I, I mean, I did partner. eventually want them to kill someone. Yeah. Please kill someone. <laughs> but it's true. Like, if you kill it to Stan, we'd have no eyes inside the CIA, except like... Well, I don't want them to kill it. I mean, I kind of just anyway. wanted to see it happen. I at least <laughs> right. wanted to get shot. But kill kill the FBI director. Kill Martha. Kill someone. <laughs> Anywho, with that said, shall we move on to predictions? Let's do it. Let's. Because I got a good one. All right. And now... <laughs> you set yourself up. <laughs> Oh, we'll, wait for, we'll wait for the late show to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. This isn't really even a prediction from uh, from this episode, but from based on last episode, Stan and Martha are, are Stan and Martha are going to hook up. Oh man! I think for sure. What? Stan is so lonely, and Martha is getting sick of Clark. And you can see in that in that scene oh, in, the the gun, in the gun range, there's something. Something's going to happen, and then Martha's going to like spill the beans to him or something like that. Hmm. Maybe that's why you can keep it. Yeah. I hope that actually happens. That would make for such an interesting I don't know. Uh, I'm, I, I, Does that make me officially a Starthus shipper? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Predictions, predictions. Um, I think this is a pretty safe prediction, or maybe wishful thinking. I don't know. Uh, I think... Um, I think, uh, oh man, I, I, she, her name just fell out of my brain. Uh, Elizabeth's daughter. Oh my word. Paige. Thank you. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> She's like in every episode. Um, I, I think Paige is going to uh, uh, surprise uh, Elizabeth in, in a way that uh, 
that I don't I don't I think she'll probably be, re be recruited and she won't fall for it. I don't think that she'll I think hmm. I think she she'll she'll hold on to kind of her American ideals even though she's critical of America. I think they're going to do a sharp turn and and there might be some some interesting things happening there. Yeah, maybe yeah. she's going to decide, hey, I want to become like an FBI agent. Yeah. So to go 100% the I opposite I cannot direction. believe yeah. my parents are working for the enemy <laughs> like as much as I don't like my country. Huh? NBC's doing allegiance, which is like the Americans continue. Yeah. It's very interesting. <laughs> maybe. Sorry. His weird. first maybe. assignment was to spy on his own family. Yeah. So weird. Anyways. <laughs> uh, no, that's, a, that's an interesting point. I, I think that Elizabeth is going to finally be broken that her spirit in some way will be broken that will cause her to, at the last moment, not want to turn Paige into a spy. Do you think it could happen when her mom dies? I don't think it's going to... Th I don't think... I think if her mom dies soon, then that will kind of reinforce this need to recruit Paige. Mm -hmm. But I think something else is going to happen, whether she be caught, whether yeah. she be tortured in some way, something that causes her to, to say, I don't want this for my daughter. So that that's kind of where I'm... I'm getting the feeling what's of. her achilles heel though is the question like we don't we still haven't seen oh, that at no, least I, I haven't I, I think she i think she absolutely does i think it is that tunnel vision i think she mm -hmm. can't i think it's uh it's very easy if you if you you know i think claudia did this a lot over the last couple of seasons it's very easy to kind of plant an idea in her head and just like you know wind her up and get her running like an energizer bunny yeah and mm -hmm. she won't even see the consequences she's gonna something is eventually gonna break that break her and that might even be Maybe she does recruit Paige, and then something horrible happens to Paige. So who knows? But I think something will will eventually break her kind of like soldier spirit. I think she's gonna wear a really great wig next episode. <laughs> she always has amazing wigs. Their their wig maker is awesome. So we did, I hope I want to meet the wig maker at some point. Actor I want to meet their wig making connection. I want wig. Philip's mustache. <laughs> right? Isn't Everything. that an epic mustache? Yeah. But he Beautiful. had a great he had a great mustache. He had a great one episode. today. Yeah. It was it was very it was, clean. It was, like a, it was like a cop mustache. <laughs> Costume design, yes. wig making. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. All right. Well, I think that about wraps us up for the Americans After Buzz I think show. So. As always. But I'm, so, I'm so happy to be on this panel with you yeah. guys and talking about this Thank whole episode. You. I'm happy to be on this panel, too. Yes. I didn't think I would be able to, so yeah. I'm happy to. It's great to have to you guys. Me. Where can everyone follow you guys? Look, I'm at Radio TFB on Twitter, and I'm also just an engineer around After Buzz, so you'll see me from time to time. Go to joshrichmond.net if you want to see other stuff I do. Awesome. I and there, it's good stuff. I bet. Uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, you can uh, reach me on Instagram and Twitter at Julian Dujeric. Really at Julian Dujeric across the board on all social media. But those two, I'm most active on. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Miss Adrian Snow. That's M S A D R I A N S N O W. All right, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Goodbye, comrades. <laughs> <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.